Hi guys, it's Debbie. As you may have noticed from my different background in my latest videos, I'm no longer in the house in the United States, but I'm back home in Italy. While I was living in America, I had the opportunity to experience all the aspects of daily life and compare them with my life back at home. But I also had a lot of time to reflect about my experience as a whole. So today I'd like to speak about what I learned from my trip. The first thing I learned in America was to perceive distance in a different way. In Europe, we are used to having everything very close to us, everything is very small. If I were to now step out of the house and start driving, in a couple of hours I could be in Austria, then Germany. If I drove east, I could be in Croatia, Slovenia in a few hours, or I could drive west, drive all the way through France and be in Spain by tomorrow morning. But in the United States, the concept of distance is different. For a holiday, I once did 11 and a half hours straight on a plane and I was still inside the United States. In America everything is bigger and a European country could easily fit inside one of the 50 American states. So people have a different approach to traveling. It's very common for an American to travel long distances. I've heard of people commuting for work on planes. Many people who work in the big cities such as New York but live in the suburbs will even leave two hours in the morning in order to take the train into the city. On Thanksgiving I met a family who had driven four hours straight to be there for dinner and right after that they would have done another four hours back home and living in america i had to adapt to these distances my boyfriend and i lived in two different states and we would spend hours on buses or trains to meet up so now when i think of having to take a long train to Milan or to anywhere really, I see it in a different way. I think of it more as a normal thing, not something to prepare for. On the day I came back to Italy, my plane landed in Rome and I did an overnight seven and a half hour bus ride all the way up to the north. But at the same time, I remember that on my third week, in America, it took me over five hours just to get home from Westchester County, uh, which is just above New York City. The second thing I learned is a thing I guess most people learn once they live abroad, and that is appreciating some things from your home country. Before leaving for America, I had traveled a lot, but it had always been journeys in the order of weeks, never longer. So I never actually experienced the reality of living somewhere else, of living abroad, of paying taxes in a foreign country, obtaining a foreign driver's license, uh, visiting a doctor. And before leaving, I used to be heavily critical about Italy. Most people in Italy are actually quite critical of their country. I was always complaining about how things worked or didn't work. I would insist about how things would be better abroad and so on. And some things were better abroad. But I also realized just how many things I gave for granted back at home. I think you tend to realize um, more about things in the absence of them. So I saw home in a different way. And it wasn't just missing home and missing the things I was used to. It was realizing that I had been complaining about a situation, the reality wasn't that bad. The third thing I learned is that if you are a person with an artistic walk of life, the American dream can be true. In the United States, especially in the big cities, there are many environments which allow people with an artistic career to express themselves, meet people in their branch, in general, improve, boost their career. This doesn't mean that if you're artistically talented in your home country, nobody will notice you. But I've noticed that in America, because of all the intertwined net of businesses of business people work in specific branches if you are a person with a talented artistic career you may have higher chances of boosting your career another thing i learned is how proud americans are of their country every morning in school the kids recite the pledge of allegiance which is also recited before other events the american flag is hung everywhere and in general there's a feeling of people being proud of being american and this idea of feeling proud is also demonstrated in smaller events in personal achievements for example i've noticed many families displaying big signs outside their houses congratulating their kids for graduating from high school university graduations are a huge celebration and even smaller scholastic achievements personal achievements sporting achievements are always seen as something big something to be proud of to celebrate back in italy england and i think in europe in general we are proud of our achievements, we are proud of being part of our country, but it's in a more reserved manner. No pugs, dear. I'm British. Another thing I noticed in America 
is that you either go big or you go home. What I mean is that I've noticed that in Europe there is extreme wealth, there is poverty, but most Europeans share a similar lifestyle. And even if you're slightly above the line or slightly under it, you have access to the same benefits, the same education, the same health system. If I think of all my friends over the years, I have had friends living in villas, driving SUVs, and friends living in welfare homes. And we were all applying for the same universities, looking for the same jobs, shopping at the same supermarkets. People who graduated from university have better opportunities of finding better jobs, but even if you graduate from high school, you can find a good job. Now, this is just my impression as an outsider visiting the United States for a certain period of time. So I'd like to hear the opinion of anybody from the United States. But what I've noticed in America was a distinctive gap between wealth and poverty. In America, certain options are very, very expensive. University costs hundreds of thousands of dollars, and if you can't afford to attend it, highly likely, you may not have good job opportunities. I've read articles describing the gap between the public education system and the private one. If you can't afford to have access to a good health insurance, you may not have access to the treatments you need, the checkups you need. If you don't have a high income, you may not be able to afford healthy options, but there is only a huge gap right down to the penny saver stores, which offer unhealthy options, and it all becomes a vicious circle. There is not an in-between option. So I've learned that under this aspect there are many differences with Europe, but I repeat, I this is just an outsider point of view, a view I've been able to patch together thanks to the opinions of different people I've met. So I'd love to hear an inside opinion. Instead on a lighter note, I've learned that the stereotype of America looking just like in the movies is real. Everything you've seen about American films is more or less what it actually looks like. If you've grown up seeing film elements such as the yellow school buses, huge coffee cups, the Super Bowl and Christmas lights in Times Square, that's how it is. And if you are a film fan, chances are that you can walk into any town in America and something has been filmed there or an actor or a director used to live there. One last thing I learned in America and a thing I had lazily started to appreciate was how easily you could get something done. Thanks to drive throughs apps, simplified online versions of everything, so the long hours store was, uh, stores were open. In America you can carry out most things online. From taking an Uber wherever at whatever time, to swiping into your gym class, to knowing how far away your bus is, to your food order. And even if you forget something, don't worry. The superstore will be open until late hours or it will have a drive through. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you soon. Bye.